Hello, I'm John McNamara, the Information Architect for IBM Messaging, and it's my pleasure today to introduce Andrew Schofield. Hello, Andrew. Hello, John. Hello, buddy. Do you want to tell us, Andrew, uh, who you are and, uh, and what you do in IBM? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Chief Architect for IBM Message Site. Um, I've worked for IBM for about 25 years, always in kind of, uh, you know, messaging uh, middle there, I suppose. Okay, fair enough. So you're the Chief Architect for Message Site. Could you give us a, a, a quick introduction into what IBM Message Site actually is? Sure. So um, IBM Message Site is it's a messaging appliance. Uh, it's designed specifically for mobile and machine-to-machine communication, really. Um, so you know, the great thing about it is, it, it, effectively, scalability. Um, when you when you're uh, connecting up mobile phones or um, Internet of Things style devices, mm-hmm. they tend to be very numerous. So scalability is a very important thing. Mm-hmm. So, so that's essentially what it's for. So, what kind of use case would you uh, have for Matches Site? Is it for say devices connecting up and being controlled and monitored, or uh, mo- is it mobile, mobile phones, that kind of thing? Or what would you say is a good use case for it? Both of those, really. And from the sort of the, the, the sort of the messaging infrastructure point of view, mobile and Internet of Things are pretty similar. You know, they're very numerous things. They talk in very small packets, mm-hmm. um, and they like kind of most responsive system, I suppose. So um, you could use it for connected cars, yeah. where you you maybe got some um, telemetry data that you want to publish from 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 cars off to the uh, you know the car company's um, headquarters. Then message sites a good way to do something like that. Smarter cities, maybe you've got you've got some sensors or something in road surfaces for temperature or you know anything like that. Yeah. So that's kind of data coming in from devices to some kind of you know traditional enterprise backend. You could use it the other way as well. So we use it, for instance, for um, for publishing sports scores for uh, for tournaments like like the French Tennis Open, for instance. This is where you've got you know a very narrow range of publishers sending it out to a very wide range of subscribers, and they you know they're unauthenticated web browsers essentially. Right. Um, so the data is only able to go out there, but it gets published very widely, very quickly. Gives you a very responsive uh, view of the of the of the scores of the tennis tournament. Fantastic. Now you mentioned um, you mentioned a couple of words there: publish and subscribe. I know that's a messaging model. How does publish and subscribe link to message site? So publish subscribe is um, is, is kind of a is a communication model. Instead of rather more sort of traditional um, kind of one to one request response kind of model, mm-hmm. with publish subscribe, somebody who sends data sends messages is called a publisher. Um, and the recipient of the, of the data is called a subscriber. And every time you publish a message, you um, you attach to it a topic string, which kind of tells you what the message is about. Yeah. And subscriptions are done in terms of topic strings again, so you kind of register your interest. And in the middle between the publishers and the subscribers, you have a server. And the server's job is to basically take the messages from the publishers match them to subscribers and then send them out and the publishers and subscribers are not really aware of each other right. how many there are it's very loosely coupled um, and the server takes all of the load of disseminating the messages out to the um, you know to the subscribers you know message site is very good at that that's really what it's for it's hard it's got a very a very sort of fast publish subscribe engine right. designed for great scalability essentially so you've got this kind of almost like a sea of data coming in from sensors and devices pushing information up and their message site then be able to link that published information with subscribers that are interested and they could be back-end applications to people mobile phones wanting to lay the scores of of tennis tournaments for example yes so a whole wide range of things are used for it that sounds fantastic um so i understand from what you're saying it's it's, it's an appliance so it's a box so how can developers kind of get their hands on this technology and play with it try it out so for for production use you, you do need to buy a physical appliance because you know in, in order to get the great scalability we need kind of need to fill this piece of hardware with the messaging yeah um, but for development use there is a virtual edition as well um, which is you know it's a free download um, it's it, it's not got you know great scalability or anything like that but it, it runs on a laptop so every developer can have their own server um, and you know, write their applications against it, and then deploy it onto a real one in the future. So, so developer can just download, play around the technology, get the application working, try it out, and then once they're comfortable with it, yeah. they're going to promote it onto a real appliance and see it working in reality. Yes, that's right. That is awesome, buddy. Thank you very much. So what we'll do is um, we'll put all the links into the notes for the show. 
we'll put the download link in as well and also link to the community and I've got MQ Dev and the IBM Messaging community there's a load of good information on there and um, feel free to download have a play okay. Andrew thank you so very much buddy it's been an absolute joy as usual you're welcome cheers Bye. buddy